Greetings and welcome to Mr. Van Lowe's poorly monetized, low-budget science channel. Do not click like, do not subscribe. Today we're going to be formatting a table uh, and then pasting it into a Word document so that everything looks nice. So here I've collected some data, but it's incomprehensible. This table looks terrible, okay? I don't know what's going on. So I need to add some uh, header labels and that's what we're going to start with. Uh, here in the A column, I have my independent variable. That's the thing that we're changing. And in this data set, uh, what we're changing is pendulum length. So I'm going to uh, put my label in. There it is. Uh, now, as we can see immediately, I can't see my entire label. So what I'm going to do is click on this wrap text button. And that's going to make it so I can see what's going on here. Uh, so I've added uncertainty, and importantly, I've added a unit, uh, meters, and it's really critical that we have that. So uh, I'm also using a plus minus sign, which is not on your keyboard. So we're going to need to insert that. We go to the insert menu here, and we go over to symbol, and then uh, when that symbol menu comes up, what you're gonna see is this, and you're going to want the advanced menu, okay? So you expand it by clicking here. And then you get uh, your emoji, your arrows, etc. We need a math symbol, so I'm going to click on math symbols, and there is mine. All right, so double click that, and it will insert it into the appropriate spot. And now I have a label on my independent variable. Now next, I need a label for uh, the rest of these headers, and I could uh, put period and seconds in each one of these trials, but it would be repetitive and it wouldn't actually look very good. So what I'm going to do is click this row here. Okay, you can click any row, but I'm going to click the top row. And then I'm going to go to insert. And that's going to put one row above uh, my others. So I'm going to select these top rows and then uh, I go back to my home tab and note that I'm selecting the rows for each trial in my average. And I go to the Home tab, and then I go Merge and Center, and that's going to combine all of these cells into one cell. So I hit it, and then I will <clears throat> put in my column label, period, in seconds. Okay, uh, this is going to leave one column without a unit, and that's not acceptable. So my unit for procedural uncertainty here is going to be the same as the rest of my dependent variables, seconds. Uh, if you wanted to, you, maybe you could put plus minus seconds there, but it's probably not necessary. And uh, this text is poking out of the cell, so I'm going to hit uh, wrap text for that cell also. Okay, and then uh, we can increase or decrease the width just like that. And uh, now I've got a bunch of white space here that I don't really want. So if I select this row and then double click, double click, okay, it's not working. Um, you can resize it. <clears throat> okay, uh, usually that automatically sizes it, but it's not doing what I want here. It's okay. All right, uh, so now things are already looking a lot, a lot better. Our uh, column headers have units uh, and labels, and they all have them. Uh, now we need to process a little bit of data because I have too many significant figures here. And to figure out how many sig figs I should have, I'm going to need to calculate my average and procedural uncertainty, both. Okay, so the first thing I will do is... Uh, Go to this cell under my first average for my first uh, manipulation of the independent variable, and I'll give it an equal sign and then type in AV, and that's going to bring up the average function. Okay, so I click that, and now I will select my five trials for my first manipulation, and the last thing I want to do is close parentheses. Okay, so I put in a close parentheses and hit enter, and there's my average. Okay. Uh, now I need to repeat that process for each of these, but that would be a waste of time and we're using a computer. So instead, I'll hit Control C or uh, right click and copy 
and control V or right click and paste. And now uh, each of these cells will have the correct value. And you'll note that the formula automatically shifts to the correct uh, selection of my data for each manipulation. So that's really, really handy. Also, uh, I've just kind of showed you the slow way because another thing you can do is just grab the corner of your cell and drag it down and it will copy and paste automatically. <clears throat> okay, so next we need to handle procedural uncertainty. And for that, we're going to need a formula. This is a formula for procedural uncertainty. We take the maximum value of our five trials and subtract from it the minimum value and divide by two. Um, and we could just look at this and see our, our minimum value here and our maximum value here, and then we could start plugging things into our calculator. Huge waste of time. Uh, instead, we're going to use this formula. And this is a formula for this exact data set, but um, you, your data set might look a little bit different. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like if I type it in manually. So uh, first thing I want is an equal sign and a left parentheses, and then I'm going to add max and select the max function and then I will select my data for my five trials. Okay, now I need to close parentheses and you should see uh, two little red parentheses there and we're going to subtract so that's a minus sign and the next function we need is min so I type that and I select min and again I select my five trials just by clicking and dragging. Okay, uh, then I need to close parentheses, and I need to add one more parentheses because, just like in your calculator, uh, the numerator needs to be all in parentheses before I divide. Okay, so now I have a parentheses here and a parentheses here, and I can divide by using a backslash and divide by two. Okay, so that is going to produce procedural uncertainty for this manipulation. Nice. Uh, make sure you don't accidentally pick up your average, um, although it actually shouldn't matter. Okay, so now I need to copy and paste this, and I'm going to do it the quick way, and there it is, done. Um, <clears throat> now we can see right away, uh, we have kind of an issue here because we have a whole bunch of sig figs here due to the calculation, and we only have a few sig figs here. In fact, for procedural uncertainty, we should only have one significant figure. In other words, only one non-zero digit. So what I'm going to do is uh, select all of these, and I'm going to use these two buttons on the Home tab, okay? So uh, this button here is going to decrease the number of decimal places. I could also increase if I wanted to, but I don't. I want to decrease. So I click, 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 click click and now my procedural uncertainty has one sig fig for all values and that is what we want okay so what we notice here right away is we have two decimal places we've rounded off to the hundredth place and that is what the rest of our data set should look like as well because we can't have a measurement that is uh, more certain than our uncertainty Right? And if we have more significant figures, that means that our measurement is more certain. And that's not okay. We need to be conservative where certainty is concerned. So I'm going to, again, decrease my decimal places, and we should include averages there. So click and drag to select, and then just decrease, decrease, decrease to the hundredth place, two decimal places for all values. Okay? And now, my data is looking really good. However, um, now we need to look at some formatting issues. Uh, first, we have center justification here and then right justification here. In other words, the text is on the right side of the cell. And for my trials, it's left justification and right justification. Just doesn't look very good. So I'm going to uh, select all of my data. And you can do that just by clicking this spot. This will select everything. And then over here on the Home tab, again, Home tab, you will see Justification opt Options. So I'm going to click the Center Justification, and now everything is in the middle. Nice. Uh, now if we look at our cells here, what you're going to notice is there's a lot of white space. And white space is not good 
when we're trying to uh, be concise. So we need to get rid of this white space. And the way that we do that is just by selecting the columns for our trials. These should all have the same width. We can adjust the width manually just by picking in between two uh, columns up here so that we see this little double arrow sign with the line through the middle. Okay, and then we can decrease, and that's gonna decrease the width for all of these columns and it'll produce the same value. Okay, so you can kind of play around with that until you think it looks good. Another option is to double click and that's gonna automatically size it. So if I just double click between the two cells, that will automatically size it. And that's gonna really decrease the amount of white space. Uh, but visually, I don't know, might look better with a little more space, not much. And there we go. Okay, uh, we can do the same thing with the average and procedural uncertainty. Just select our two columns. Just click and drag and select our two columns and then double click. Uh, I don't really like <clears throat> this, so I'm going to manually size this one. Okay, manually resized. Uh, pendulum length, we'll try double click. Yeah, don't really like that. So we'll manually size it. Just click and drag, click and drag, click and drag, click and drag. Okay, that's good. All right, uh, now we're almost ready to paste this into our Word document. Every column has a unit, very important, again. Uh, and so next we need to add some uh, borders to our cells to really make it look good, really make it look professional. So I'm going to uh, select all my cells and I'm going to click on this little pull down arrow here and that's gonna bring my border options up. So we need all borders going to click on that and now all my borders are dark and I need to add period here as well I didn't add it previously and now we can just click this box and it'll take care of that for us okay so now I'm going to paste this into a word document so I'm going to select all of my cells and I'm going to copy right click and slide over to my Word document. Here I've already added a label for the table. Tables should always have a title, so should charts. Okay, make sure that you have a chart, uh, make sure you have a label for every chart, every table. And when, when we paste this in now, it's gonna look pretty good. Uh, here again, if you want to, you can do center justification. I frequently do, and that looks pretty solid, pretty solid. Okay, thank you for watching the video. Uh, again, do not click like or click subscribe unless you really, really feel you need to. Uh, my name is Mr. Van Lowe, and I hope you have a great day.